Like a tailbone, who you got to tell on? If it ain't about me, about hold the about face. If you ain't no higher, learn it. The soda in the pot and the fire. Burn it. Feels like it's been forever since I talked about this anime. But to be fair, I have to apologize because I was. Stuck into a few things I need to catch up on, but I'm back on track. Well, at least I'm trying to be. <laughs> Motto to, to Love Rue is the second season of the anime series To Love Rue that has been produced by Zebek and has been directed by Atsushi Atsuki. It chronicles the life of high school student Riko Yuki after he meets and accidentally gets engaged to the alien princess Lala Satalin Devolu. After watching the previous season, season one, to love room, I was on board. I was indeed loving the series, especially since the Loose Goose has sent me copies of the seasons. But watching the second season, I was worried if they was going to fix certain issues that I had with the original, which is the plot holes, the tropes, the lack of character development. And let's just say here that they it's like a double-edged sword gesture because they have fixed it. They have fixed a lot of issues here for the most part. Most of the characters on here in the second season was beginning to embrace their flaws that they was having in the original. And one of them that stood out for me was Golden Darkness. On the previous season, she was cold-hearted. But at the same time, she was beginning to open up on this um, on the second season. She was beginning to have this little transition cycle where she's trying to search for love and trying to see what's so strong about it. And at the same time, she was beginning to care for these people too. And I like that. I like that about a character because when we have assassins on animes, they always have like this cold-hearted gesture. But what they try to do with Golden Darkness here is that they want to mix this out. Make her be this assassin but try to switch this when she needs to and when she doesn't have to and that was one flaw I did not mention on this on the beginning of the series but that is something that did that did need to be fixed in my opinion so she could be more likable one of the characters that they actually fleshed out more that took me off guard was Yui Kotagawa now I do like Yui Yui's character can, de can be debatable some people don't like her because of how feisty she is, but I like her because she's at the counterbalance of this anime. When this anime becomes to be outrageous or too over the top, she tries to put things together by giving people these, <laughs> these restraining orders saying that this is not right, this is basically not what we're supposed to be doing, your skirt is too short and all this stuff because she is one of the vice, well she is in the school trying to make sure everything is together and people are not perving out, but what I like about her character is that she's beginning to express her emotions as well in a secretive manner by her having a love interest towards Rito Yuki. Now I do kind of wish it give her a different love interest because it's very cliche, but by her going to Rito so much because he's doing so much of these things or being a witness to them you can't really she can't really avoid coming in contact with them which is why she's having these emotions they also fleshed out Rito's family on here which was an issue on the first season as well that I keep mentioning now they don't really explain much of Rito's family in the original version even though him and his sister live alone in this apartment and there's no signs of no parent activity but they have explained why they're not around on this uh, on the second season and in a creative way they actually add some humor and emotions to it and it did not stand out to the point where it was unnecessary i knew why they wasn't around and it made sense and they decided to add an, to add an episode to it that made it more humorous and more joyful speaking of humor they was topsy-turvy with the humor in this anime and the reason why i'm saying that is because they decide to keep all the regular humor tropes on this one when it comes to lala's inventions some of the inventions we kind of been there and done that but at the same time they have fleshed out these same inventions by adding more creative plot angles to them which made it more funny more revealing <laughs> 
and above all, it plays a part into the franchise of the story itself, so you won't be pulled away of why she's doing this, this doesn't make any sense, but Lala is a known aspect of the anime, she's from outer space, so even by the stuff that she eats and what she wears, she is going to go around with these inventions so people can go along with it. So I did not have no problem with it at all, especially when it plays a part of the exposure so we can be in the heels every time that she's in, she, she pulls this stuff off. People that sees these inventions is not going to say that that was not necessary. The character development was pretty good, acceptable in a way, especially when it comes to Lala's sisters, Nana and Momo. Now, I was very curious of how they was going to play out in this anime. Now, to be fair here, they just showed up, and on the first episode, I was like, okay, why is they here? Are they going to explain why they're here? And they did, and, and it felt like it was lackluster. It felt like, okay, they're here because of this reason, okay, so we have to just roll with it. But further into the anime, we know more of their presence and why they're here. And at the same time, what they business is here with Lala. I believe that the character development was well done. It um, put me into a more of a, cre uh, of a curiosity state of how they're going to be later into the anime as I go further into the franchise. And at the same time... They really pull their weight on here with the humor. Uh, there was some scenes on here that I laughed a lot. And there was some scenes on here when they showed some context that even though I have to say they have pushed the, em the envelope of the context here. And I thought that the context on, the, on, on season one was very, very revealing. But... I keep saying this, when you go forward into animes and movies and when you make sequels or next second seasons, you have to bring your A-game. And I wasn't disappointed on this second season. They revealed a lot of sexual context here to the point where I was hoping that no one would come in the room while I was watching this anime. <laughs> Especially with Nana and Momo scenes. Jesus. Especially when they was playing with each other's tails. That really threw me off the park. The major strength of the sexual context here that I almost forgot to mention is the way how they conduct it. And they don't really conduct it in a way of humor or just making the audience feel awkward, which they do a good job here on this anime. But they actually do it in the mature aspect as well when they show characters begin to express how they feel or just show their love emotion towards these characters. This is something that animes need to do more often. And I'm saying this because when newcomers of anime begin to watch modern animes that are known by pervy activity, they don't really show much of why these contexts is happening. They just show it because there's a creep around or a female is being too over-sexualized or she's being too over-sexually active. But on this one, when they show these things, they do have these pervy activities. But on second season, they don't really show much of it at all. When they show most of these sexual contexts, it's because of their emotions and their expressions and they're trying to show people how they really feel towards each other. And it, and it didn't really feel out of place. It kind of felt like if this is how they really feel, instead of them telling them, how else you're going to conduct it? And I felt like, in a way, it was necessary. Overall, I felt like this second season was, again, a good puller for me to keep going further into the franchise. It was an improvement to the first one, but at the same time, there was other characters that they have introduced into this anime that still needed more drive, more character development, and above all, I needed more pull of, of their presence of why they were there. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure they'll make it make up for it for more OVAs in the next season that's coming up in the future. I'm going to have to give Mato to, to Love Rue a B-. minus. Guys, please stay tuned for more my anime content and more videos hit it your way. I beat the bell this time because I am less than 13 minutes away. <laughs> Either way, that's all I have to say for today. Please stay tuned for more my upcoming anime review videos. <laughs> Screw it up. <laughs> and, and videos hit it your way. This is Hugo, your critic teacher, and I hope you guys have a good day.